Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and NVIDIA has recently released the newest card in their GeForce GTX 600 series. It is the 660 Ti. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of the ASUS DirectCU 2 version of the GeForce GTX 660 Ti. And let's start with a closer look at the box. Now DirectCU 2 refers to the custom cooler that ASUS has designed, which they've implemented with the 660 Ti here. It is actually the same cooler that they use in the 670, and I'll be doing a comparison between the two ca cards in just a few moments for you guys. Uh, the GPU is the GK104, again, same as the 670, and there's a lot of similarities, but uh, you do get 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Uh, it works on the PCI Express Gen 3 bus, which means you get double the data bandwidth of PCI Express Gen 2. It is, of course, backwards compatible compatible with Gen 2, so don't worry if you're using an older system and just want to upgrade your video card, you will still get just about the same performance with Gen 2 or 2.1 as you would with Gen 3. You also get digital VRM, that means digital power delivery, so uh, more stable overclocking as well as a longer lifespan of the components that they've used. Uh, you also get the GPU tweak utility from ASUS, you can download that and install it in order to do stuff like overclocking, which this card is very capable of thanks to its cooler. Now you'll notice over here the 660 Ti, uh, ASUS does a couple versions of this. This is the stock speed, so this is one uh, will run at stock clocks. There's also a top version, uh, which you guys can also check out. Uh, ASUS bins the GPUs, tests them out, and it reserves the highest performing ones for the top series of cards, um, and those come manufacturer overclocked. Uh, here's a listing of the inputs and outputs, sort of a closer look at the DirectCU2 cooler right here. It actually uses copper heat pipes that make direct contact with the GPU for increased thermal conductivity and better cooling performance. Uh, again, digital power delivery, digital VRM, super alloy power that they've used in the CAPS MOSFETs and chokes to deliver power to the GPU. And then there is a close-up of the GPU tweak utility. Nextly, we shall take a look inside the retail box and see what all comes with the card. Your accessories are located in here. Here's a speed setup guide for graphics cards. This is a, sort of a general use graphics card installation, sort of a walking you through the process if you've never done it before. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer video series if you'd like some more information on installing this video card. Here's a driver and GPU tweak uh, utility DVD. Uh, it's best to download the drivers, latest drivers from the NVIDIA website or the ASUS website. You can also get the latest version of AI Suites or the GPU tweak utility from uh, ASUS, support.asus.com. You also get a little adapter here. This is a DVI to analog VGA with a D-sub 15-pin connector right there. Um, so you can use that if you're using an older monitor. You can only uh, use this with one of the DVI ports on the card. I'll tell you which one that is. You also get a Molex, two Molex plugs to single six-pin PCI Express power plug here for power delivery to the card. And uh, that's if you're using an older power supply that doesn't have that connector, you can use that. Uh, I should mention a 450-watt power supply is recommended at minimum for this video card as well as the rest of the components in your computer. And now we're on to the video card itself. I'm going to start off with a measurement from the bracket right here. We are at 10 and a half inches, maybe just a, just a hair or two over 10 and a half inches. So uh, decent length that should fit in most computer cases at 10 and a half inches, but you might want to take a quick measurement just to make sure it will fit. And looking at the 660 Ti, just, just from the get-go, from an initial perspective, the ASUS version specifically that we have here, uh, it looks very similar to the 670. Yeah, and in, in, in fact, I happen to have a 670 right there. So I'm going to set these side by side and give you guys sort of a comparison because uh, when you're talking about specs with the 660 Ti, there are a lot of similarities. Uh, it uses the same GK104 GPU, which is located right underneath there as the 670, uh, and that features lots of uh, NVIDIA stuff like GPU boost, so it will automatically overclock uh, the GPU. Uh, you get TXAA, which is temporal anti-aliasing, which is a technique they use in film, uh, which is some post-processing anti-aliasing that's enabled. You also get FXAA, um, which is also post-processing anti-aliasing, which is a much less hit on the GPU, so um, keep your eye out for games that are compatible with TXAA and FXAA if you're planning on getting these cards. You can get a nice uh, eye candy jump up using those technologies without uh, too much performance hit as far as frames per second. You also get NVIDIA surround, and that means you can hook up three monitors uh, to this single card uh, for gaming. You can actually connect four monitors overall. Three of them can be used for gaming uh, with all those connectors there. You also get uh, 
DirectX 11 support, of course, physics, uh, 3D vision, uh, SLI compatibility, and with the 660, that is one difference from the 670 and 660. You can do three-way SLI, at least as uh, of the filming of this video. you got two SLI connectors right there. Uh, you also get CUDA technology, which means you can use these uh, the CUDA API for uh, stuff like rendering videos and other uh, GPU accelerated tasks that use CUDA. And in fact, you get 1,344 CUDA cores in the GPU, just like the 670. And then, of course, OpenGL 4.2, OpenCL support. Uh, and then let's talk about some actual hardware specs. Again, uh, as mentioned, the GK104 GPU uh, has a base clock of 915 megahertz. Again, same as the 670. Uh, it has a boost clock of 980 megahertz, and that's, again, for this stock card. Again, same as the 670. Uh, so you might be thinking, where is the difference here? Well, the difference is partially involved with the memory, and there are some RAM modules. Uh, well, back here, there's different places that they could put them, but that's where they are. Uh, you get the same amount of memory, 2048 megabytes or two gigabytes of GDDR5. Uh, one of the biggest differences between the two cards is gonna be your memory bandwidth. So you actually get uh, four 64-bit uh, memory controllers built into the 670, which gives you a uh, 256-bit memory interface. Uh, you get one less with the 660 Ti, so it's a 192-bit memory interface. Apart from that, very uh, similar uh, designs of the cards with the ASUS versions here. Again, you can see they've gone with the same high build quality uh, with the 670 and the 660. One of the big differences between these two cards specifically is that the 670 here has a full length back plate. Uh, and that's just, again, to provide a little bit of uh, extra rigidity and support. You do have a similar function right here. You have a uh, plate that's bolted on right here near the bracket that's running down the length of the card again to provide a little bit more support. These uh, coolers aren't massively heavy for the 660 Ti, but uh, that does provide you a little bit more support rigidity. Uh, another cool feature they have right here for your power delivery area, you, can need, you do need two uh, six pin PCI Express power connectors, um, but when you plug those in, there's actually two LEDs right there. They'll light up red if you've neglected to plug those in or if you're not getting the amount of power that's needed. They'll turn green once you've plugged in your PCI Express power connectors and you're getting the power that's required. Uh, Design-wise, apart from that, we have a matte black PCB, which I will say looks quite nice. I do like the color. Uh, the cooler itself, again, uses uh, direct heat pipe contact. So you'll notice these silver heat pipes here. These are actual copper, but they're nickel-plated. Uh, you got three of them here that go right underneath there and make contact with the GPU. They're going to run along the length of the car here to an array of fins, aluminum fins that are out here. And you'll notice that those are located directly beneath one of the cooling fans. Uh, and that's going to simply direct air down over those, cool, over those fins, help disperse the heat. It's going to provide a little bit of airflow in between the cooler and the card at the base right there. At the opposite end, you have two more heat pipes running out here into this array of fins. That is, uh, again, providing much more, uh, power, uh, much more heat dispersion for the power delivery area, which is located primarily on this end of the card. Also, if you uh, can see right under there, there's a little black plate and uh, that is actually providing direct contact uh, for the MOSFETs because those are uh, part of the par power delivery that gets most hot uh, when it comes to uh, video cards. And again, more heat dispersion. It's going to help the card run cooler. It's going to allow the fans to run at a lower speed. It's going to uh, create less noise, and it's going to give you a better gaming experience overall. And uh, before I close up here, I did want to point out these power or connectors right here, video connectors. Uh, so you got four of them. You'll notice DVI-I and DVI-D. So the top one here is digital only. Uh, both of these are dual link DVI connectors. All the uh, display outputs on this can support up to 2560 by 1600. The D right here, you'll notice, doesn't have that little uh, plus shape on, on the plug right there, and that simply means digital only. So if you are gonna use that uh, adapter that I showed you with the accessories, use it for the, the lower one here. This is DVI-I. Uh, same function digitally, it's a DVI out, again, uh, 2560 by 1600 resolution supported. This one also has the analog connector. Also, you have the uh, HDMI and the DisplayPort outs. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the ASUS GeForce GTX 660 Ti with the custom DirectCU2 cooler. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.